it's a problem, right? It's really freaking stupid that some states want people to go get a license to braid hair. Ridiculous, yeah. insane, little girls braid hair. However, if you make that all of your messaging, if you put that at the forefront of everything, when everyone else is like, hey, we were just on house arrest for a year. I had my livelihood ripped away. My cousin committed suicide. Everyone's depressed and drinking. You, you got your priorities out of order. We need to speak to the things that are really obviously the problem. And uh, I would also say that, you know, almost no one else, no other political party has really done a good job of talking about this. Can I pause for a second and, and just note that uh, we got Brian on here who's getting uh, Congressman Massey on, and our typical lineup includes like homeless people that believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> Welcome to the Brian Nichols Show, your source for common sense politics on the We Are Libertarians Network. The Brian Nichols Show is the fastest growing liberty podcast that brings together people from all means of political thought as we seek to have meaningful conversations about the issues you care about. At The Brian Nichols Show, our goal is to leave the audience educated, enlightened, and informed. And now your host, Brian Nichols. Well, happy Friday there, folks. Or for you YouTube listener, happy Thursday. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on another fun-filled episode. And today we have a returning guest, one Angela McArdle. She is running for LNC chair, yes, chairperson of the Libertarian Party. And today, not only does Angela join the show to talk about why she is running for chairperson, but also who is the Libertarian Party buyer persona? Who is it that we are going after for our target market? Plus, all the amazing things that Angela's been doing, helping advance libertarian solutions at a local level, all that and more on today's episode. So, that being said, on to the show, Angela McCardle returning to The Brian Nichols Show. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Angela, thank you so much for returning to the program. Yes, you are running for the chair of the Libertarian Party. What a title you are going after. And my goodness, with the slings and arrows that comes with that title, God bless you for wanting to take a step into that. Now, we've had the current chair, Joe Bishop Henchman, on the show. And candidly, he's a good friend. Um, and I've watched your, your, I feel like Palpatine, I've watched your career with great interest um, as I've, I've really especially watched the uh, issue of the lockdowns and, and the lack of of lockdowns being addressed from national. I went the past year lambasting national, much like you, um, saying, guys, what are we doing? Why are we talking about the lockdown? So I've definitely been watching your uh, your candidacy, Angela. And I'm, I'm curious because I hear a lot of people out there saying, I wish there was somebody who was going to help get us talking about the lockdown messaging. And Angela, that's been top of mind issue for you. So how about this? Let's maybe reintroduce yourself to the Brian Nichols Show audience. And really, what brought you to this prominence being uh, really the, the, the number one candidate for the, uh, the Mises Caucus here running forward for a libertarian chair in 2021. So I, you're, you're correct. I do chair uh, the Libertarian Party of Los Angeles County. I'm running for the national chair position. I'm also on the executive committee for the California Libertarian Party. I also chair the California Mises Caucus. We're our own political action committee and I'm on the board at the national level for the Mises Caucus. So yeah, there's a lot going on and I'm looking to add to it the national chairman position. And for anyone who's wondering how I find the time to do this, I actually do all of this full time. I, I have given up my regular day job in litigation to focus on libertarianism full time. How did I get so interested in running for the national chair position when I already had so much going on? Well, Last summer, I saw LP National hemorrhaging support because they were not focused on speaking out against the lockdowns. They were you know, spending plenty of time talking about Black Lives Matter and other civil liberty issues, but we were not talking about the civil liberty issue that's staring us right in the face, which is why, why has our federal government uh, and the state level government basically just said, go ahead and be on house arrest for the rest of the indefinite future. Like that was really disturbing. Yeah. So I told people, you know, I, I think that I might run. Let's see how it goes. I had some health issues at the time and I wanted to be really committed to this if I do it. This is, I, I think it's a really serious role. And a, a lot of people will jump into the race sort of at the last minute as a vanity project and waste everyone's time. They think it's really fun or, oh, it'll be my stepping stool to getting on the national committee. I'll run for chair in a failed race and then people will give me a consolation prize vote. Well, I think it's really, really important. So I'm taking it very seriously. So I did announce right after 
the elections in November that I was going to run for national chair. And I was really spurred to do it by the lack of action over lockdowns. I want to say, though, that there are some people on the LNC, the Libertarian National Committee, who are speaking out boldly against lockdowns, but that messaging is not getting translated. The motions and resolutions and so on and so forth that these people try to put forward just never get passed by the rest of the board. So, you know, Karen Ann Harlos has been a really outspoken advocate. She's the secretary. She's really radical. Joshua Smith, obviously, is not in favor of lockdowns. I believe Stephen Nicola in Florida has, you know, he's he's had a better approach to it. And, and certainly Aaron Adams also, who is from Oklahoma. So I do want to give a shout out to the people who have been trying their best to to move forward good messaging. But, you know, they need they need someone in leadership who is going to really say this is important to me and it's what the, the libertarian party should be talking about so i'm hoping to fill that role now i'll give credit where credit's due and i, I don't know if you've noticed this especially angela over the past few weeks i, I think a couple months or so maybe really the libertarian twitter especially the libertarian party twitter has been much more active and much more like good <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um. It, it kind of caught me off guard. I. I. And and LP National. I'm. I'm. You know. Kudos to. I. Th I think we have a new. Um. Social media director. Um. So hey, maybe that's making a positive change. Maybe we're seeing some steps in the right direction. And I'm hoping, you know, candidly what we're doing here at, at my show, and we're seeing this across the board with other libertarian podcasts, libertarian activists, that maybe it did just take enough of us starting to get involved, get active and, and maybe starting to change the conversation a little bit. And let's kind of maybe segue towards, well, I've been told to be afraid of you, Angela, <laughs> you and the Mises caucus, you guys are supposed to be so scary. What's going on here? This, this Mises caucus takeover of the libertarian party. Can you maybe give us some more context into that? I don't really understand all of the, <laughs> I don't really understand all of the ridiculous fear mongering and, and rumors that come around. I mean, I guess it's just people feel threatened by new new members. They feel threatened by our energy level. I got to tell you, like in California, we don't approach it as a takeover. We approach it as though we're coming to help out, which is basically what we've done. We've grown the party membership significantly in the last year, and all of a sudden we have a ton of new members who are signing up to fill vacant or stagnant committee positions. They're offering to do help with conventions. They're offering to be volunteers on Jeff Hewitt's uh, gubernatorial race. We've got a ton of energy and enthusiasm that's getting pumped into the party, and there are some people who see that as a threat because they feel like they're going to get pushed out. You know, you could say that it's like older people in the party or maybe younger people too, just people who've been in prior to other Mises members who they want to hold on to their positions and they care more about their social club than they care about freedom. I appreciate the social element of the party. I certainly do. And most of my close friends now are definitely libertarians, but uh, first and foremost for party activism, I care about making this world freer in my lifetime. I care about, being able to walk outside of my house without people screaming at me or getting threatened with a ticket because I don't have a, a freaking mask in Los Angeles, things like that. Uh, I think that needs to be our number one priority, not worrying about our social club positions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and what, <laughs> what really resonates to normal people? I think that's also what we need to be really focusing on is being normal people. This has been reoccurring, a uh, reoccurring theme here on the show. And I've actually been doing a little bit of experimenting myself, trying to see what messaging works. And and I've actually, I have a, a coworker who, um, you know, kind of in this, like I, you know, she's, she's definitely questioning things and, and kind of finding her, her way. And she's leaning more towards libertarian ideas. And I'll just send her, you know, something from Mises. And then I'll send her something from more, let's say like the, uh, the establishment libertarian narrative. Right. And, and I just, I ask her, I'll say, which one, you know, gets you asking more questions and she'll literally 10 times out of 10 point towards Mises stuff. Now I'm not saying that means that it's better because I think it's a more so what's top of mind. That's the approach. It's not a matter of saying we can't focus on these hyper specific issues, but we can't make those hyper specific issues the entire narrative, nor can we put them on the same level as the top one, two, three issues that are impacting everybody. Let's focus on the things that are impacting the most people first versus going more of this, you know, needle in a haystack, trying to find that one person that our message will 100% resonate with, 
We need to have a more bold message, but that bold message can also be one that does appeal to more people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so occupational licensing. This is something that uh, the liberty movement talks about a lot. It's a problem, right? It's really freaking stupid that some states want people to go get a license to braid hair. Ridiculous, yeah. insane, little girls braid hair. However, if you make that all of your messaging, if you put that at the forefront of everything, when everyone else is like, hey, we were just on house arrest for a year. I have my livelihood ripped away. My cousin committed suicide. Everyone's depressed and drinking. You, you got your priorities out of order. We need to speak to the things that are really obviously the problem. And uh, I would also say that, you know, almost no one else, no other political party has really done a good job of talking about this. Republicans have really weaponized it against Democrats and made it like a us versus them thing. But there are red states that have, they've still locked down. So this is like, this was like the softball that was lobbed at the Libertarian Party. And we just like stood there and didn't swing the bat. Yeah. What happened? What, 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 what do you, okay. Genuinely, what happened? Do you think? Because I got to ask myself this. It seemed so obvious. The most obvious libertarian position unquestionably is no to government lockdowns. Like just, just emphatically no. So where did that disconnect do you think took place? Well, I think it's because the libertarian party at the national level is too busy trying to get everybody to like them and chase mainstream culture. They're preoccupied with that. So they don't want to speak out on tough libertarian issues. They're, they're very intimidated by it. So they view, oh, well, if we speak out about lockdowns, it's, it's going to be insensitive and people will hate us and think, oh, you just want to kill everyone's grandma. The, the reality is that grandma has been dying slowly alone, isolated, miserable in a nursing home by herself because government regulations are pushed on these stupid nursing homes and people can't even go in and see their families. That's something that we should talk about. You want to give a compassionate message? There's dozens, hundreds, thousands of compassionate messages that are involved with speaking out against lockdowns. And so we have to like get over this, this fear of alienating normal people. We need to go and be bold and speak libertarian messaging and, you know, to hell with anyone who who's afraid that we're going to alienate people by speaking out about it. Get some better self-esteem. So one thing we talk about here at the show, because we, we approach through more of a sales perspective, talking to prospective buyers and, and also from a marketing perspective, knowing that that you know market and also your buyer persona. So I'd ask you, Angela, I, I my audience, they hear my perspectives and my thoughts all, all day, every, I guess, four times a week. So how about this? Let's go to towards you. Who do you think you, is the, the libertarian buyer persona? Who is our market in 2021 and in 2022? This is a really important question, and it's something that LP National has not delved into, and I don't believe most of the state parties have either. We don't know, right? We need to do market research. I've got a group of people who, and who are interested in doing that, and I've reached out and actually spoken to some marketers. It looks like we might actually get that done. Rather than wait until if and when I'm elected as national chair, I'm just getting the ball rolling now. Cool. I like to think that our market, our demographic, is people who are truth seekers, people who are questioning the mainstream narrative, people who are distrustful of government to, to varying degrees and who are trying to find answers. I think that people who watch you know, Joe Rogan and Tim Pool's podcast are probably a very good demographic for us. People who are interested in intellectual dark web stuff, good demographic for us. However, mm -hmm. I would like to do actual research on that and not just throw all of my eggs in the basket basket following my gut instinct. So that's, you know, that's my plan. Yeah. And I would, so let me add to that too, because I, I agree. I think that's definitely people who are empathetic to our messaging. I also think more, we need to also focus more on uh, sales professionals, sales executives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I listen to a lot of sales podcasts and I was just saying this on, on an episode I did with Brian McWilliams from Lions of Liberty. Um, when I'm listening to these, these shows, it's n none of them are talking about politics. Like they, they, they overtly make sure to avoid politics because that's not what they're talking about on the shows, but you can hear in what they're talking about, the way they talk about things. There is absolutely an underlying libertarian sentiment. I mean, they completely understand the ideas 
of of how incentive structures work. I mean, if we were to approach them with an Austrian economic approach, they'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense because they they understand how incentive structures work. So I would say people like that, and also just normal people, normal people who have been able to just kind of look around objectively, objectively that is, and and just kind of be like, yeah, this hasn't worked. What the the government has said, and versus what actually I can see with my own lying eyes. It doesn't match up and something there's a big disconnect. I think that person as well. And I, I guess it's a little difficult to identify. How do we narrow down who that person is? But I'm sure we could we could dig into, you know, the, the types of you know shows they listen to, the music they listen to, the, the TV shows they watch, who that person could be. And I think it's going to be a lot of people out there. I think there's more people out there who are empathetic with that messaging than than we realize, Angela. I think so. Salespeople, that sounds like a really good instinct people who are interested in the power of persuasion people who have to really hustle and work to earn a living people who make money on commission i think they're going to be sensitive to government taking their paychecks small business owners and entrepreneurs startup companies they're all they all really feel the burden of government regulation and they're always trying to find a way around it i think that they would be sympathetic to us medical yeah. freedom community People who are in agriculture and they're struggling, they want to, they're on, they work on a farm and they want to sell farm to table, but the government doesn't allow them. Those people are ripe for our picking too. There are a lot of demographics and we probably need targeted messaging to most of those demographics. Obviously we need a good solid, you know, social media game and marketing and commu communications game at the top, but targeted messaging for different demographics would be something really great too. Yeah, I, I'm so I'm right now I'm finishing up a book I, I just showed you, right? I got my new copy here of um, the Anarchist Handbook from Michael Malice. I'm getting ready to, to read this, but I'm actually finishing up a book currently. And it's The Undefeated Marketing System by Philip Stutz. And one of the things he talks about in the book, and it's in for marketing, and he focuses on the Trump campaign. Uh, love or hate Trump doesn't matter. That's not pertinent to the conversation here. But looking at what the Trump campaign and the Trump team did from a marketing perspective was absolutely just genius because they would take an ad and change just the slightest details and test that ad in quite literally a thousand different ways. And then from those thousand different ad results in those analytics, try and paint a picture of what type of message in the ad with those tiny little details will reach what type of people and then extrapolate that information across larger data sets. And, and that's something that we have not done as a party. And, and to your point, it does take somebody just to get the ball rolling to actually start to go down this pathway because otherwise we're going to be absolutely just spinning our wheels. If we're just going to be taking what we think is a good idea and tossing at the, the you know wall and hoping it sticks, what are we doing? I mean, that, and that's one of the bigger criticisms I had of the Joe Jorgensen campaign was, well, I think she's a great lady. I think she's a very smart libertarian. I think she's a great libertarian going out and having 10, 12, 15 planks on your, your candidacy that you're talking about every single campaign stop. It puts your average person to sleep because maybe they, they're concerned about two, three, four of those issues. But for the other 10, <laughs> they're putting the, the, you know, the, the, the please do not disturb sign up because it's put them to bed. And I think that's where maybe we're going to have more success, Angela, is when we can marry those two worlds together, focusing on the right buyer with the right message. Boom. Now we're going to have a great opportunity. Yep. You got to tailor your message and you got to trim it down and you got to make it really count. No one wants to hear the same stump speech 50 times, you know. What if, what if you do go and you, you speak at a, an event and people are excited and they're like, Ooh, I want to see where she, what she talks about next. And every time you look it up, it's the same 10 issues. So that is definitely a snooze fest. Um, I don't even know that I would fault Joe for that. I think it's a campaign issue. I don't know that there's one individual person that the fault lies on. We just need to be better organized and we need to be better educated on what it takes to change someone's mind and to get someone excited. I don't like to put people to sleep, you know, I'm not like, hi, my name is Angela. Let's read man economy and state together over the next 48 hours. Like that's they don't that's care. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They don't care. They don't care about a lot of the things that we care about. I'd like to say they don't care yet. You, you got to hit people with like the most exciting, compelling stuff first and let the other stuff just kind of trickle in. Yeah, no, I hear that. I, and, and I think that's one thing also, and we've talked about this in my show before where 
libertarians have to stop focusing on what we think people need to be caring about, right? And and there's a lot of stuff we, we know that they should be caring about, but we have to get them to first pay attention to us and trust us. And right now, I don't think we've really built up a really great level of trust. And Angela, that's why I think what you're doing right now from an affiliate level, and then we were talking about this beforehand, uh, you're, you're going out county by county, really, and helping build up these affiliate programs to help libertarians build that network of trust. Can you dig in that a little bit more? Yeah. So most states and a lot of counties also have some basic affiliate training tools. They have a handbook. They have some stuff that they thrust upon the new people they have convinced to start county level libertarian parties. We all know you need officers, you need someone who knows what to do with money and what the laws are. You need bylaws, you need meetings, and you need uh, stuff, you know, resources, a website, a list of people to contact, things to do. No one ever starts out that question, that discussion with why. Why should you do this? What are you hoping to achieve? How are you going to communicate to people? Uh, what is branding? How do you distinguish yourself? Because you're putting right like your sweat and blood into this thing. How do you distinguish yourself from your organization? How do you manage the community, the culture? You know, we had we had the California convention, fantastic convention. A lot of Mises Caucus people took uh, office. Everybody was collaborative. There were old time people in the party who said it was the best convention they had literally ever been to. We finally got through business in four years. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Compare that with the Pennsylvania convention where you had people literally screaming at each other and swearing at each other. And, uh, you know, like over a hundred delegates not being able to participate in business. Huge, huge, ugly, nasty drama fest. So how do we like fix the culture? You know, we need a, we need a better foundation. And that's one of the things that I'm really focused on with affiliate building is like build it, like start with a solid foundation, build in the culture, build in the branding, build in the communication, that sort of stuff. So that, you know, you, you have something solid to work with so that people aren't just kind of wondering like, why the hell did I do this? I don't actually remember. Well, now I'm burned out and pissed off over a bunch of drama and I just rage quit. We really need like a better vision for the party. And, and what's been driving me crazy. I, I really, so I've been doing my show now going on which is crazy, almost going on four years. Um, and in the time I've been doing my show, but also in the time before that being part of the Liberty movement, one of the things that used to really bother me was that we just see people doing things because that's the way it's been done. Yep. And it, it kind of hit me. There was a moment where I'm like, we're trying to sell people on quite literally changing the entire way that we do government in the United States of America. But we as a libertarian party can't decide whether or not we're going to, going to change with the times and stop sending out a flyer to people every single you know year, like a big magazine that costs us how much money because... It's We've always done it and people come to expect it. I'm sorry. That's not, that's not good enough. That's status quo. Like that's the enemy of us getting like actual Liberty stuff done. Like that's driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Over $26,000, I believe on a news newspaper that only goes to members or people who subscribe to it specifically. Wait, can you say that again, Angela? 26,000? Over, I think it's a little over 26,000. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's approximately $26,000 just for the, it's a newsprint news. It's not a magazine. It is, this is not a full color, exciting, gorgeous, beautiful promotional display. It is a newsprint newspaper with articles about us. I've been in it. Thank you. I appreciated that. However, there were, there's probably a better way to spend <laughs> money. Yeah. And oh, just imagine people. what they could do with online resources. We could use that money and target people and then retarget people and use it for video. I mean, like, oh my God, it just, the inefficiencies, Micro, yeah. why are we doing this? Micro donations request would be a better way to reach out to people through text messaging and text banking. Young people like that. Uh, young people don't have $500 to write a check for, but they have $5 and they'll do it every damn month if you ask them to. Uh, they're, they're, you know, if we're going to send something out by mail, I would rather send it to people that we're trying to get to join. A right. lot of, a lot of paper goes out to members to encourage them to re up too. 
And I, I don't want to say that there's no value in direct mail marketing, but I believe the value is oversold. I think we can do this with less paper. So I'd like to see that happen too. There's, I mean, we are probably the most tech savvy of mm -hmm. folks out there in the political world. There is no excuse for us to be using the most archaic means, the most archaic infrastructure from a technology standpoint. And also just in terms of how we're trying to market, how we're trying to brand, how we're trying to sell ourselves. If we're talking about big L libertarian, again, I apologize to my audience who they usually come for, you know, more like just like thought stuff and like, you know, issue stuff. This is like libertarian party deep stuff, which I'm okay about because we need to have these conversations because this is like how we're actually going to be able to form the libertarian party to be an effective vessel to get libertarians into office so we can make real people's lives better like right now. So that's why we do these kind of conversations. And I think, I mean, Angel, I've offered LP national and candidly, I really haven't heard too much back in terms of doing like sales help. And Hey, I'm a sales professional by trade. Like it, this is what I do for a day job. I train people every single day. And there's people in the Liberty movement who they too have certain expertise that they are offering to the, the libertarian movement. Take advantage of those people. Like say, yes, let me help, like let, help us. You, let us use your, your tools. Let us use your skills to help advance us. And I think that is when we're going to really start to see this cohesive movement turn more into a, a real force to be reckoned with. Yes. Like why are we saying no or pushing out or stonewalling someone who's offering to help us with skill set that we don't have and we desperately need. We need people to understand how to sell these ideas. We need people to understand how to brand them, how to communicate. I mean, with, you know, sometimes we need to teach people how to be social and be affable and, and likable. And, I, you know, these are the things that no one else wants to say, but I'm just going to say them. Like, we're not always very likable. We could be very rude and coarse, not just with each other, but with people that we're trying to convince to be libertarians. So we do need some help with that. And I think that the National Party should definitely facilitate that. It would be, it would be great. Time for libertarians to uh, to paraphrase the uh, the one and only Spike Cohen. Time to do some libertarian shit. Uh, and, and we only can do that when we actually have people paying attention to us. And Right now, it's on us, I think, to uh, to start getting people to pay attention because, well, nobody else is, Angel. So you're doing your part. You're helping get people uh, and, and really getting some excitement going in the movement. So thank you for that. So with that being said, I have your Twitter here for the YouTube watcher to uh, see. Scrolling at the bottom, it's at Angela for LNC Chair. Uh, we'll include that link in the show notes. Where else, Angela, can folks go ahead and follow you if they want to go ahead, learn more about you, and uh, maybe support your can uh, candidacy for LP Chair? Sure. So I post a lot of regular content on Patreon. You can always go find me on Patreon. I have a Substack as well, where I give a lot of updates about what's going on at the national level uh, with my chair race and also uh, in the state of California and what resources we have to people who want to get interested in the Liberty Movement. And you can find me on Clubhouse. I am also on Clubhouse and we've got some Mises Caucus uh, events popping off on that next week. At Angela for LNC Chair, Angela McArdle. She is running for Libertarian National Committee Chairperson, the Libertarian Party. Angela McArdle, thank you for joining the Brian Nichols Show. Thanks for having me. All righty, folks. That's going to wrap up my conversation with Angela McArdle. Thank you so much, Angela, for joining the program. And thank you for joining us, you amazing YouTube listener and audio listener, on another fun-filled episode, yes, of The Brian Nichols Show. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please do me a favor. Go ahead and share today's episode. And when you do, make sure you go ahead and tag me at B Nichols Liberty Twitter, Facebook, Minds.com, and Parlor.com. Also, if you enjoyed today's episode, episode and uh, maybe you want to go ahead and uh, you know let the world know head over to apple Podcasts. i'd appreciate that give us a five star rating and review or if you want to make it even easier brian show.com right there on our website you can see there's a reviews tab at the top hit that it'll bring you right to apple podcasts and you can go ahead and do it right there um also if you want to go ahead and get in touch with me email me brian at brian nichols show.com perhaps you know a guest that would be a great on the Brian Nichols show, or perhaps you think you would be a great guest. Well, again, email me, brian at Brian Nichols show. 
Com. Also, if you have not had the chance yet to become a supporting listener of our Patreon, become a supporting member. Why not? $5 a month or $10 a month entry-level sales or account executive. Either way, you'll be getting one of our awesome don't hurt people. Whoop, there we go. Don't hurt people. Don't take people's stuff. Bumper sticker. Also, by the way, um, if you are just a normie and you want to buy one of these awesome bumper stickers, you can do that too, by the way, because we now have a brand new, by the way, this is oh, okay. Friday. Super exciting. I know I'm you YouTube listener are getting all sorts of my hand motions flying in the air. And I swear to God, I'm not Italian. We have a brand new collaboration with a amazing sponsor here in the show, Proud Libertarian. And I am so excited because we have a brand new Brian Nichols show store. That's right. Are you ready for this here? Now, th this is going to be terrible, um, terrible audio for you, 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 or uh, you podcast listener. Um, but I promise for the YouTube listener, it's absolutely fantastic because they get to see right now on the screen our brand new store. So I'm going to start at the top here. We have our awesome Life Gets Better. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Remzo Martinez. He had this idea and I said, I'm going to turn it into a shirt if you don't. So I did. Uh, so we have our Life Gets Better shirt. Uh, cool mask, bro. Uh, that's a fun shirt. Uh, don't hurt people. Don't take people's stuff. Question everything. Good ideas. Don't require force. Make conspiracies. I'm sorry, make conspiracy theories, conspiracies again. Uh, and then my favorites, uh, I'm not going to say it because I'll wake up mine, but Hey, you know, the device that you always search with. Yeah. Hmm. Overthrow the government, which you can see over my shoulder, the other version, Alexa overthrow the government. Um, and then we have this also on cups uh, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm just scrolling through here so you can see it. And then I go to page two, uh, get ready. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Co more coffee cups, more stickers. It's, it's glorious. It's, it's amazing because, uh, this is because we've been able to grow the show. We've been able to show the value, um, out there to folks because people are paying attention. People are getting excited about the ideas, the concepts of Liberty. And this is just another way for us at the show and in the greater Liberty world to take it to the next level. So if you're interested, it's uh, again over at uh, proud libertarian, um, it's a uh, proud libertarian.com forward slash collections forward slash the Brian Nichols show uh or you can go right to their homepage, liberty partners and you can see right there brian nichols show thank you to proud libertarian so excited for this partnership going forward um and with that being said uh, one final request and that is if you have not had the chance yet you you're in the mindset of helping sell liberty well hey i'm gonna make it really easy for you how about this we're gonna go ahead uh, not, not stream yard go away stream yard wrong thing uh <laughs> We're going to, yeah, you're in again, audio listeners like, what are you talking about? Wrong button on the, the YouTubes. It's okay. Um, no, but what we're going to do is we're going to show here, here, the four easy steps you can implement now to sell Liberty to friends and family. You can find that at briannicholsshow.com forward slash Liberty friends ebook link in the show notes for uh, briannicholsshow.com forward slash Liberty friends ebook. It's been amazing to hear the reviews, the, the, the folks out there who have had the chance to sit down, not only read the book, but now apply it to real life. They're seeing it work in action. That makes me so excited because I knew it was going to work. I do it every single day. Um, but it's great because now we can start to point to other people who are using this in real life. You heard Chris Goizetta on the show talking about him using it. You heard Jeremy uh, when he was on the show using it and talking about people he's been talking with who are using it. So we're seeing it's working. So I'm going to implore you head over to this amazing free ebook. It is again, one more time, four easy steps you can implement now to help sell Liberty to friends and family. So that's all I have for you this week, folks. Did you enjoy the conversation with Angela? I hope so. If you did, please let me know. Otherwise, coming up here on Sunday, a conversation with question mark because, well, I'm not sure where, what I'm going to do with this conversation. I candidly don't have a candidate for uh, the Sunday Candy Highlight Series, so I'm kind of up in the air. So how about this? If you have an idea for Sunday's episode, email me, brian at briannicholsshow.com, or can hit me up on the social medias, uh, especially Twitter, at B Nichols Liberty. I want to hear what ideas you have for Sunday's episode. But with that being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off here on the Brian Nichols Show for Angela McArdle. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.